I've been uh, playing again. Quite some time ago, I uh, made some changes to the uh, inlet to the turbo, including uh, modification to the airbox. This included opening the inlet to the airbox up to 110 millimetre, then removing the screens, uh, of which there's three in the um, in the top of the airbox lid uh, and the map holding tube. This, uh, removing those screens actually opened up uh, the airway by 24%. Uh, I also replaced the uh, inlet pipe to the turbo with three inch all the way down to the turbo. <clears throat> now, the result of doing that was a 0.1 increase in MAF flow, uh, which means that the engine was getting uh, considerably more air. Okay, the second part, oh, but, and one more thing. I found that at cruise, 100k in cruise, my boost went up by 1.5 psi without making any other changes. So the math voltage went up and uh, also the boost went up. Okay, to go on from that, the second step was to uh, modify the exit from the turbo up to uh, the cross-country intercooler. Now, as you can see, that's the standard pipe over there. Um, the standard pipe is uh, 45 millimeter up to 57. So um, in the terms that you buy hoses, that's inch and three quarter to uh, two and a quarter. Now it's inch and three quarter for a total of 420 millimeter and then it goes up to the two and a quarter just as it enters the um, as it enters the uh, the IC so this was the modification um, the really hard part to get on this was the transition from inch and a quarter up to two and a quarter uh, I finished up getting one from uh, from TurboSmart and the part number was TS-HR175225-1 BK uh, that was the only one I could find uh, the other parts are, uh, are quite easy to get so these two 2.25 straight joiners uh, I bought a 2.2590 from ARE and a 2.2560 from ARE which I had to cut uh, to get them to fit the way uh, I wanted them to and then I had them flanged seeing as I'm not all that far away from ARE after I cut them to the right length I took it back to them and they, uh, they flanged it for me Okay, so what did I expect to gain from this? Well, I'm, I'm not really sure, but I had an idea that the long, narrow section on the, uh, on the genuine pipe uh, could well hold the MAF, be a restriction on the MAF, and make the MAF reading a little bit more stable. Uh, but then again, who knows? So it was uh, it was worth uh, a, a project. Now, before making any changes, I did my usual and documented a whole heap of, uh, of math voltage readings at different revs and uh, you know conditions. I also took. Uh, 90 to 100k in fourth gear readings 
uh, actually uh, there, there were ten of each, ten of the math readings and ten of the, um, of the acceleration tests. After installing the tubing, I repeated those tests. I couldn't really detect any significant change in math, but there was uh, a definite seat of the pants feel that torque was improved at around 2000 RPM. But the major difference was that my 90 to 100k in fourth acceleration times on the same stretch of road under the same conditions consistently was three tenths of a second quicker, which basically meant that my previous fastest time was now my slowest time. It's, um, and you can feel it, you can feel it. I've never really been interested in maximum horsepower. We rarely get to drive at those revs. I mean, these things are uh, maximum horsepower, you know, three, seven, four grand, something like that. So we don't really do that. My interest has always been torque and overtaking safety capacity, uh, which is a transition from torque to horsepower, having a good, smooth, uh, strong transition. Now, I appreciate that no two vehicles are the same, but um, this has been my, my experience, so uh, I'm quite happy with it. Well worth doing, for me anyway. Thanks, guys.